Welcome back to Balanced Health. Um, we have some more viewer questions for Dr. David Bryant, and also, of course, we have some questions for him, too. We were talking uh, when we went to our cooking segment about the imaging and the mammograms, and tell us what's the latest. I know that MRI is much better imaging. Are, yes. do they, are they catching more breast cancers than the, than the typical mammogram? Yes, so uh, science only gets better. The MRIs are getting better. Our detection right. rates are getting better. Uh, an example is we were talking about the B BRCA mutation. Yes. If women have that mutation, it's a lot harder for some reason to pick up their breast cancer on a mammogram. Huh, so the, the really? sensitivity of a mammogram is probably in the range of 35 percent. Okay. Whereas if you had an MRI, it's in the range of 77 percent. It's not 100 percent, okay. but it gets better seemingly each year. Okay. So now for Good. women with the BRCA mutation, most doctors are recommending if they're going to follow it, follow it with an MRI. Absolutely. Um, where, if I knew I had it, I definitely would want the best imaging possible. Exactly. Another example is if you have been diagnosed with breast cancer, they found that if you get an MRI, you'll actually find more things. Now, I say things because a lot of those things they see aren't necessarily cancer, things they pick up on the MRI that they don't see on the mammogram. But, what uh, kind of things? Other kinds of tumors? Benign okay, lesions. Cysts and cysts. things like that? So okay. the uh, actual... Do they need intervention? <clears throat> and that's the issue, is that you see all these things, and what do you do? Do you have to go biopsy them all? And that's mm. why we can't always recommend an MRI. Right. So because you'd end up biopsying a lot of women, putting them through the procedure, and then wanting to know what the results were, and possibly sure. causing an infection or pain, wow. uh, and you don't find anything in it's those not, lesions. It's not an exact science. So that's why we call exact. it the Science. practice of medicine. Exactly. Right? So. Yeah, it's 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 not funny. I mean, it's it's tough because I found out when I went when I talked to this guy and we talked about my odds. It's all kind of like yeah. You know, it, you know, you're looking at the odds, you're looking at the data, you're making informed decisions, and that's the best you can do, really. Yeah, and the, the key when I we talk about odds, I always try to tell patients to ask questions in terms of if a hundred women had this and what's the benefit to the hundred because we talk about absolutes and relatives and that can be very confusing it's confusing for a lot of doctors and it's com certainly confusing for the patients so sometimes I could say oh if you take this pill you have a 50 percent reduction in your risk of developing breast cancer mm -hmm. well everyone's gonna take it well but I if, don't know I <laughs> but if you say it's really the absolute benefits <clears throat> one to two percent then you're like oh really well, wait a minute for instance um what is the one you take when you've had breast cancer? Tamoxifen. 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 You know, I mean, my gynecologist uh, says to me, you know, you have a high risk. That was before I had the gene test. But she's like, you know, take tamoxifen. Well, I remember how much my mother hated taking it. Tamoxifen. How she had horrible, horrible fl hot flashes all day long and mm -hmm. I had just worked my way through that and I just didn't want to go there and when you really look into it you know is it really that beneficial those cancer preventive drugs like that right so that is the question and that's the question you have to sit down with your doctor to discuss mm -hmm. so if you have an increased risk yes there is data to say that if you take raloxifen or tamoxifen you can reduce your risk of developing breast cancer and by pretty big numbers I understand well that's too. what I was just saying the yeah. relative benefit is huge the 50 percent but the absolute number is small two or three percent now what's the difference so that's why I say if you you'd have to talk in terms of a hundred women okay so if I'm a woman and I say if you take this pill it'll benefit you 50 percent of the time the, the, the patient has to say, okay, if you give it to 100 women, how many oh, more will be alive? Hmm. And then the number can be one, or wow. it could be two. Really? So in layman's terms, so, if yeah. your chances of getting, <coughs> say in this case, this breast cancer, were two out of 100 women, mm -hmm. and if they took the drug, it, it, has, it, it cuts it by 50%, which is one out of 100. But exactly. the, the, the fact of the matter is you started with a two out of 100 chance. Exactly. So now you have a one out of 100 chance. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. the relative, it, in that case, is very misleading. Exactly. It is, because it might be, make it so unpleasant for you. It's not worth it it's for not. you. So it's always not ask your doctor, are you talking in terms of relativity, or are you talking in terms of absolute? That's, that's a good question. So, and I sh Did and you, you hear that, ladies? And you should do always that with ask your, those questions. your treatment recommendations and everything. So. Right. And that's that's kind of how it's, and, and it's I have changing. To, and I tell you, the other thing that kind of scares me is, you know, I was one that was totally sucked in by the hormone replacement therapy. I was on it for eight years. Mm -hmm. I never felt 100% comfortable doing it, but it made me feel so much better. And I'm afraid they're going to find something on Ramoxifen or Tamoxifen that, you know, long term that it's going to be bad. I'm a little leery now. Well, Tamoxifen's been out for a long time, but. Again, with the estrogen, the actual absolute increased risk is somewhere between 1 and 2 percent. 
So you can still say it increases your risk of breast cancer by 50%, but well, And what about stroke and stuff, though? I mean, that's high, Right, too. so there are a lot of issues. There's a lot of issues. Yes. And, I, and I was actually, I was going to ask you a question about that. Oh, yeah, my question was, you know, a lot of doctors are still prescribing it, even after yes. all the horrible data. Um, and it, apparently, there must be times when it, the benefit does outweigh the risk. Right, and that's where the discussion comes in. Okay. If you're having severe hot flashes, you just can't take it, you can't function during the day, yeah. the estrogen does help prevent those hot flashes, but it will increase your risk of breast cancer. And that's for women who still have their uteruses and right. they're taking the combined estrogen yeah. and progesterone. The same study did not find an increased risk of breast cancer if you're just taking the estrogen right. and you no longer have your uterus. And at least they're giving smaller doses. You know, Shelley, with all this talk about estrogen, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we had said earlier in the show was that the doctor felt that one of the uh, increases before of breast cancer was that the estrogen window for right. women has increased. Right. And so we always want to give a nutritional component to this. Uh, one of the things our viewers need to understand is all the uh, xenoestrogens that are uh, in our plastics. Hmm. So it, it comes from our water, it comes through these wow. plastic pipes, it comes from food that are wrapped in plastic. And so in other words, what can we do about it nutritionally? Well, yes. one of these things you can do to keep your estrogen window closer to God's design is to feed your kids uh, natural foods uh, do not uh, put things in a microwave in plastics, never in saran wrap, never on plastic plates. Uh, these estrogens get absorbed into mm. the food. These I thought they were carcinogens, but it's actually est estrogen Well, it's both. Too. both. It's both. Yeah. There, there's, there, there's chemicals well, we that come through that are carcinogenic. We were going to do a debunking the myth to, to talk about if that really was dangerous to put plastic in the microwave. We still so I will. Guess, no, I guess we still will because we'll right? name the carcinogens. But we're talking now about these xeno or designer estrogens. They're called designer estrogens because they're really man-made. Um, and there's no question in my mind that this is increasing the estrogen window. Mm -hmm. And we have girls, you know, starting menarche at, you know, uh, eight and nine years yeah, old exactly. and seven years old, even you're hearing these, and that's just not natural. Yeah. Is, that, is it also because we put hormones into our food? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And it, but that, that's what, you know, the, 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 these hormones, these growth hormones that they give them, a lot of them have estrogen. So. Well, well, Joe, we should get to at least one viewer question here. And, and to me, this is a little, I mean, you know, this is pretty an obvious answer. But she says, should I go to my doc for any lump in my breast? Because she said, I know a lot of them are harmless nodules. Um, and what if the lump or nodule is elsewhere, like around the, the neck? I mean, any lump I find, I'm going. But <laughs> yes. what would you That's say, doctor? I always say, go to the doctor. And uh, we are, we're good at detecting some things that are benign. So we, it's not like we go and take every woman to the Start operating room yeah, and so cut everyone. We can do an much. ultrasound. We didn't talk about ultrasound. Oh, yeah. But their ultrasound can just show a simple cyst and the doctor can reassure the patient that it's a cyst. And, you, and the doctor can say, you can come back and we can follow it sure. if you want. But uh, the mammograms and the ultrasounds are pretty good and the mammographers are very good at trying to detect suspicious lesions versus benign but, but lesions. Yes, go, but you should go to your doctor. Go check lesion. them out. Absolutely. Yes. Go Common check them sense. out. Yes. Well, remember to email us your health questions at balancedhealth at tln.com. And for more information on Dr. David Bryant, you can visit tln.com and click on balanced health. We'll be right back with your health with your healthy habit for the day. So don't go away.